Today's video we're going to cover a means to help stiffen up the chassis of uh, C4 Corvettes. Um, originally during the design of the C4 Corvette it was actually designed around a T-top for instead of a removable roof panel and the uh, management of General Motors decided that the car at last minute would actually have a removable roof panel so the chassis wasn't exactly optimized for a removable roof panel uh, so there is a little bit of chassis flex and stuff like that a lot of that's explained in this book by Dave McClellan uh, Corvette from the inside if, if you're interested in Corvette development and especially the C4 it's a fantastic book I highly recommend it um, but during, you know, when the C4s came out, they were originally just the coupe with the removable roof panel. And then in, you know, some of the years of production, it actually, a convertible was available. And in order to stiffen up the convertible, uh, they actually put some um, steel reinforcement um, on the underside of the car. Um, so you can actually buy these, you know, used, you know, a lot of these cars are getting parted out because they've got crashed or, or, or things like that and actually retrofit it to a C4 Corvette. So we're going to kind of do that with this coupe is take the convertible uh, metal underpinions. We'll, we'll show you where what it looks like you know the mounting some of the mounting points are already on this 96 and some of the mounting points we actually need to drill out and install some rivet nuts and we will kind of go through the process onto this car okay these are the metal pieces that we're talking about that came off from a convertible there there's two long pieces and then they meet in the middle, they're crossed, and there's a retainer plate that actually um, holds the two together with these four bolts here. And each one has, in the front, has four bolts that bolt up to a, that bolt up to the, the headers, which we will go over. And then in the back, there is a couple of spacer blocks and four bolts and these are the holes that we actually need to um, install into the car so if you actually go to the car itself if you look here those are the four bolts into the front that are already there that's on the right hand side and this is on the left hand side and then if you go to the back of the car in front of the rear wheels if, if you look in this area here this is actually where we need to put our holes in and the spacer blocks kind of pull the the sheet metal down low and that uh, provides clearance for like this emergency brake cable and, and things like that and then on the right hand side um, this one's a little more open so you can see better and this is actually where we'll be installing the holes and the rivet nuts to, to thread the stuff in in place. Um, to do to mark the holes, what we're going to do is we're going to install it into the, those front holes. We'll, we'll we'll bolt it up with the plate into the center, and then we'll be able to mark the holes into the rear to uh, where they actually need to go. Uh, right now, if you look at the car, it's on a lift and it's in its level, you know. Uh, you could jack up the back, but if you start twisting or whatever, you know, you're going to start getting some misalignment. So it's just best to, to mark them where they need to go when it's sitting level. And later on, we might need to raise it up to, to drill the holes and install the rivet nuts. But to start with, we'll... We'll mount the metal, and I'll show you the location of these holes. We'll mark them, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, now if you look, you'll see that we've got it bolted up into the front. 
on both sides it's it's snug it's, it's not super tight and then if you go into the back we we've got some blocks to just kind of hold it up into place you'll notice the blocks are up in there and now what we're going to need to do is transfer the holes uh, over on this side there was a emergency brake cable with a um, little wire form that uh, that held it in place and uh, we just pulled that wire form out for now and the, the cable is out of the way but ultimately what it will do is it'll ride right in between these two blocks there's a space in there and it'll ride into there so then we come over to the other side and you'll see exactly the same thing so what we will do is transfer the holes now and then we will put in some we will take this apart and then put the rivet nuts in in place okay so we've blocked up both of the rear portions as much as we can we've we've used some wood and some shims and everything and if you look at this it's nice and parallel to the sheet metal and what we'll do is we'll take a couple of center punches transfer punches and you actually go up through and we'll hit the bottom with a hammer to actually locate where we actually need to drill okay so you can see we've removed the um the cross braces and you can see the the, the punch marks and that's actually where we're going to drill so that's on this side here and then we'll go over to the other side and uh, there's a punch mark there, 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 and there. And be careful because there's, as you can see, there's a big piece of metal that's actually really sharp. It's from the manufacturing process and I'll knock that off, but that's, that will definitely cut you. <laughs> so be careful working under these cars. Okay. Actually, I didn't need to jack it up. I actually have a cordless drill that I'm actually going to be able to uh, get in here to, to, to center drill this. And then I've got a larger right angle drill that I'll use to drill these out. But we'll just, we'll just center drill these first. So now we got pilots and then we'll just drill it out to the size for the rivets. Okay, we'll drill out. Here's the right angle drill. It's a half inch. It's a little overkill for the smaller holes, but it's, it's what we've got. So we use what we got. So we'll just kind of get into here and just drill these like so. And still, even with the right angle drill, it's a little tough to get in here, but we'll make it. We'll do that for all four of them, and then we'll work our way up to the final drill size for the rivet nuts. Okay, in the larger sizes, I happen to have some stubby drills, so I'll actually be able to still use this to actually get into this. If you look under the car, you'll see that many of the original stickers are still here, along with ink stampings, you know, the stickers up in the trailing arms. You know, you come over to here, the stickers are still on the shocks. And you can still see all of the ink stampings and everything so this is a, a pretty cool car okay so we've got the holes all drilled down and now we're going to install the rivet nuts and and this is a rivet nut gun tool and it works pretty great um it's air driven and there's other ones out there that are manual where you can actually use a wrench to actually seat them and there's some that you look like a pop rivet tool but this one seems to work the best. Um, all you do is just, you, you load your rivet onto here, you put it in your hole, 
and you squeeze the trigger and as you can see it uh, it, it, it cinches up and um, locks into the hole and then you'll just reverse a little bit to unload it and um, and there it is so that's what we're going to do next okay so we're going to start working on setting these rivets so we'll screw them on go up in the hole and that's pretty much it we'll just back out and that's it it goes pretty quick once you get your holes all done you just want to press really give good contact pressure we just barely have enough clearance to get the tool in here these go pretty quick it's a lot of work up to this point but once you get to this point they go pretty darn quick Repeat for the other side. Okay, so there you have it. It's all installed. If you look, you can see the riser blocks and all the bolts in the back that we located and, and put the rivet nuts in. Comes through. We got the cross brace all tied together with the plate mounted up front and if you go to the outside this is what you actually see so it does hang down a little bit but it's really not bad they've got it tucked up as tight as possible they did a really good job and there's definitely cutouts for the exhaust and everything so you know it's an original General Motors part so it definitely looks like it belongs so hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching